So in this example, we're going to compute the discrete time Fourier transform of the discrete time signal x of k. In this example, we're going to work with x of k equals alpha to the k u of k minus 1, where u is the unit step function. And we're going to assume that the number alpha, in general, could be complex, but we're going to assume that its magnitude is less than 1. So that will prevent anything from kind of blowing up as k gets large. If I plotted x of k, in general, alpha can be complex, but if I think of it as being a real valued quantity whose magnitude is less than 1, then x of k looks something like this. It's kind of this decaying exponential signal. It starts at time k equals 1, because that is when the unit step function turns on. And as k gets large, alpha to the k gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So this might be something, this might be what x of k looks like for some particular value of alpha. Maybe alpha equals 0.6. If alpha was real value, this is what the signal would look like. So this, this sketch over here really just helps us as we do our computation to know where to start the time index when we need to start adding up terms in the DTFT definition. So speaking of the DTFT definition, here it is. This is just the definition of the DTFT. The DTFT is notated x of omega. So this infinite sum is what we need to evaluate for this particular x of k. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the x of k that we're working with, alpha to the k times u of k minus 1 times e to the minus j omega k. And then having this plot up here now helps me simplify this sum. Instead of summing from minus infinity to infinity, I know that all of the terms corresponding to k equals 0, k equals minus 1, k equals minus 2, etc., all of those terms are 0. So I can change this bottom limit from k equals minus infinity to k equals 1 without having changed the sum at all. Really what I'm doing here is I'm letting the unit step function turn off my signal, so to speak. So after doing this simplification, I don't have the unit step function because I've used the unit step function to simplify this lower limit. Let's keep going. I can simplify this quantity by noting that both of those quantities are really something raised to the k. It's alpha to the k and then e to the minus j omega raised to the k. So I can put both of those in parentheses and raise their product to the k. So that's just a property of exponentiation. And now I'm in a form that's much easier to work with. I have a sum from k equals 1 to infinity of this quantity raised to the k. Well, this is a very special form called a geometric series. This looks like this form right here. k equals some number m to some number n of some quantity raised to the k. So this form right here is exactly the form I have right here. If you look up the closed form solution for this summation, it turns out that you can simplify this sum like this. It's equal to beta to the n plus 1 minus beta to m over beta minus 1. Obviously, beta cannot equal 1, otherwise you have some problems, but we know for our situation, that that's not the case. We were told that the magnitude of alpha is less than 1, so it's definitely not equal to 1. So let's go ahead and use this result right here. So if we do that, we can write this as equal to alpha times e to the minus j omega raised to the infinity plus 1, because really our upper limit here is this is n, so we're taking n plus 1, minus the quantity beta raised to the bottom limit, the bottom limit was m equals 1, so we have raised it to the 1. And then I divide by the quantity beta minus 1, and again, in our case, beta is equal to alpha e to the minus j omega, so I have that quantity minus 1. This simplifies. Because the magnitude of alpha is less than 1, this quantity actually goes to 0 as it gets exponentiated by large values. So this is just equal to 0 minus alpha e to the minus j omega divided by a quantity alpha e to the minus j omega minus 1. And then I'm going to fact multiply top and bottom by negative 1. I'm going to flip things a little bit. So that's alpha e to the minus j omega divided by 1 minus alpha e to the minus j omega. So what we've done is we have just computed that the discrete time Fourier transform of this signal, alpha to the k, u of k minus 1, is this quantity right here. It's a complex value quantity that is a function of omega. So this is the DTFT of this discrete time signal. Another way of saying it is that this discrete time signal and this function of omega here are DTFT pairs. So that's what we wanted to compute. We have done what we wanted to do. We computed the DTFT of this discrete time signal x of k.